Hello Ride On people. Now a quick bit of insider information for you. I've actually ridden the Pan America a number of times now and I didn't want to give just uh, like the other videos that are out there now a first impression, you know, a quick spin around the block and uh, see if the wheels fall off and just tell you how I feel. Instead I, I figure this is such a clean sheet brand new bike I want to ride it uh, a few times on a lengthy um, test ride and so that I can give you a proper review and my proper feedback based on that rather than just initial impressions. So here it is. I'm pumping up. Oh, yeah. Okay, now turn the ignition on. That now to turn the ignition, you turn here and then that's the start, but just turn the just turn okay. the just there you go. Now, that's the adaptive rifle. Yeah. And is that just on the rear preload or is it on the front as well? It's, it's the way I understood it was on the front and back. Okay. Um, I thought it was, it felt like about. Yeah, it doesn't go front, down as much as. A lot of the back. And here's what will happen you won't so feel that while you're riding, but when you come to a stop, it'll, it'll just gradually go down, and when you stop back off, it'll come back. Perfect. And there's different, you've got custom modes that you can do on how quick you want to do. So like if you were off-road on it, you could yeah. actually adjust it and build your own custom system. I don't right. want it to do that. Yeah. I want to do yeah. it. Right. And then this button, this button right here, right now I have it in road mode. And I wanted to leave it there until you start riding. And then once you push, that goes into sport mode. Okay, so all you have to do is push it, and then you can actually also have that rain mode. Okay, do you have to put in the clutch and roll up the throttle to change the mode? I'm trying to remember exactly. It'll be one or the other. It'll be one or the other. I think I think you can change it, and I think you might have to throw it off and then come back. But you'll see anyway very clearly. Right, right, exactly. And then if you want to change, like go to the screen. Well, it's because of, uh, it's the, because of the, the section. But basically, so Richard, are you, yeah, you go to different screens? Are you up right now? Are you? Uh, is he pumped up right no, now? No, he's pumped down. Okay, pump him up. All right, turn it off. All right, now we're going to hold the front brake. All right, we're going to pump it again. So just rock back and forth. Okay, now it should be, be is it feel higher now? Okay, now, now hit this, turn it on. I signed up. It didn't do as much. And you know, part of it's because we had the kickstand down, so we couldn't pump it. Yeah. It's a game changer the USP, I think, but particularly if you're short of leg. But even if you're tall like me, it's just nice. You stop at an off camber road, you can get your foot down nice and flat. Right. Uh, you know, you put your foot down, it's a pothole. Suddenly it's like, oh yeah, it's on that far end, so yeah, that's that's uh, a huge right. I'm quite sure they this. Yeah, there, there, and adjust. I mean, adjustable back. I mean, yeah. Yeah. But here's what I'll do. I'm gonna take you on a. Is it on? I told you she's t-shirts. I didn't. I didn't see it. Three beautiful models.
so this is my final ride on the uh, Pan America special and uh, I'm going to use it to as an affirmation ride really to confirm what my initial impressions are and this is a uh, clean sheet design 100% new nothing carried over from any other bike in the range 60 degree v-twin very similar to a kind of a Prillia if you like much more so than a Harley uh, traditional Harley and uh, feels powerful and smooth it's got plenty of grunt this puts out uh, 150 horsepower and uh, you know it revs well because it has to rev high to make 150 horsepower of course and uh, being a Harley, it's blessed with plenty of uh, torque, as you'd imagine. 94 pounds per feet of torque, which is uh, plenty to get this heavy uh, machine moving. The bike doesn't feel heavy underway. It's supremely well balanced when you're doing a figure of eights in the car park, feet up. Uh, you know, a short-legged person would be very confident with this bike, I feel. I'm uh, kind of tall in the torso, shorter in the leg, so uh, for me, the screen is a little bit on the low side, even in the high position. It's got an adjuster here, You've got a little kind of like a trigger pull, and you can move it up and down. You can uh, adjust it at freeway speeds at this kind of 75 80 miles an hour speed. Uh, requires a little bit of force, but it's nothing uh, major. And uh, you know, in the summertime around town, you probably have it down, and when you're out on the freeway, you probably have it up. And, uh, or you just favor one position and leave it there. Now the bars on this particular machine were set a bit lower standard. I don't know whether they come from the factory like that or whether the mechanic who did the PDI set them artificially low, but they've cantered them up very slightly and they feel a whole lot better than they uh, did on previous rides. Uh, the bike uh, suspension is fully electronic front and rear and it's very noticeable that uh, when you uh, turn the power on, if the suspension is uh, pumped up in tire setting, it will lower like about three or four inches at the back and up to maybe one inch at the front. If the bike is off to get the, the suspension to the fullest setting, you pump it backwards and forwards a bit and then it will pump it up. Uh, but when you turn the power on, it will always uh, lower. So in ownership perspective, it will always be in its lowest setting whenever you uh, whenever you stop the bike by riding or whether you uh, are physically off the bike and the bike is on or off it's going to be in its lowest setting so uh, that's handy for uh, getting on and off the bike uh, the mirrors are pretty wide um, the shape doesn't uh, you know it's not that appealing but they're easily swapped out as is the screen if the screen doesn't fit you personally uh, but you do get a good view of what's behind you. It's pretty blur free. They are stable Now one thing I really do like about this bike is it steers very well. It's very similar to the uh, GS in that respect it will uh, uh, Go where you put it Vibes wise, uh, I actually noticed a little bit of uh, vibration through the left foot peg on this particular ride but yeah on this particular ride is uh, slightly noticeable I haven't noticed that before uh, I don't know whether that would be a problem uh, but I've not heard of anybody else mentioning that so it might just be that the cotter pin that holds in the foot peg is slightly loose or something like that the right one feels absolutely fine and the rest of the bike feels very smooth uh, you can tell it's a v-twin um, it's got the, the right sound it's got the right feel but it is very very smooth really nice to do miles on. I really like the seat. The seat is uh, a great shape for my personal derriere and it really cups it nicely. It's not too wide, it's not too narrow and it has sufficient padding and that padding is a really good firmness. It's not too firm, it's not too soft. It sort of feels like I could you know comfortably do three or four hundred mile days on this without any problem whatsoever in terms of uh, in terms of seat comfort and also the suspension which is uh, 
very very good ride quality wise uh, preload is automatic front and rear you can set it uh, manually you can tell it that it's just the rider or rider and pillion or rider and pillion luggage or set it to auto if you set it to auto it would just uh, work out the weight and uh, manage it accordingly so that's uh, you know where I would leave it personally compression feels very good when you go down into a pothole uh, you, it's not bottoming out you don't feel your backside hurt or anything like that and the rebound equally you're not getting slapped in the backside it's a good riding bike and also a good looking one I think much better in the flesh than uh, in the pictures I would say and uh, in terms of the uh, lowering suspension it's really seamless and I really mean that um, you come to a full stop I've got my feet nice and flat got a nice bend in my knee and when you pull away the suspension will rise but you don't feel it at all so you don't feel it rising uh, raising and lowering unless you're at a complete standstill and you artificially pump the bike backwards and forwards to pump up the suspension and then turn the bike on so it will lower that's how you feel it and that's how you know it's working I guess but otherwise totally seamless which is exactly how it should be you know if things work uh, you don't think about it but then uh, or rather if you don't have to think about it you know that things work uh, a good case in point there is uh, is the Brembo brakes do a bit of lean angle first gear Brembo brakes and uh, you know they're bags of feel, bags of power as you would expect, top drawer stuff. Uh, the wheels are uh, beautiful on this bike, an optional extra of $500 for the laced wheels, the spokes are on the outside of the rims for tubeless tyres and they look beautiful in black with a beautiful white Harley Davidson script on them. I would definitely order that, I would definitely order the um, the uh, automatic lowering suspension for a thousand dollars even though I'm tall it's just nice to be firmly footed on an off-camber stop or where there's a pothole that you didn't know it's that kind of thing it's just more reassuring and I think really good for residual values as well so that's kind of important uh, unfortunately we have uh, to follow our follow my leader today so we'll be restricted to the speed that uh, the lead rider sets me my guide sets me but uh, but that's okay because uh, I think I've got a good enough impression of the bike now to know whether I like it or don't like it and the things I like and things I don't like so um, we'll continue the ride but let me uh, give you uh, at this juncture a couple of things opportunities I think for improvement and then maybe just a few things of uh, the long list of good things about the bike so the things that uh, I would probably change, I may possibly change the screen out. Uh, it's great at you know this speed and country back roads, but I think on uh, actually on, I think on a on a freeway I would prefer something a little bit higher. I would probably change these mirrors out just because I think they're a little ugly. But again those things are easily swapped out and people often change those on their bikes and down to aesthetic reasons because uh, it doesn't suit them personally their personal preference or we're all different heights and sizes so the screen might not be perfect it's not a bad screen it's better than my initial impressions of it were it's actually okay uh, but uh, i'd maybe change it out uh, or at least experiment with other options uh, when you put it in first gear it has a bit of a Harley clunk to it it's not as bad as the big uh, you know the big uh, Taurus uh, and it's probably very reassuring to uh, existing Harley owners but if you're used to uh, you know the latest Ducati or something it feels a bit clunky the rest of the gears feel sneakily boo uh, but that brings me to my kind of third and final uh, and perhaps most uh, damning <laughs> Uh, ob observation of uh, potential improvement and that is the lack of a quick shifter um, I know it's not a sports bike but every one of its peers has a seamless uh, second or third generation quick shifter that's very very smooth and some people just love a quick shifter some people don't they'll always use a clutch 
but a, a quick shifter would be particularly nice and I suppose if I'm being phantasmagorically uh, minded uh, a DCT option would also be good only Honda do that uh, properly uh, but I think with Harley riders typically being older and uh, sometimes having damaged limbs and stuff a DCT option may even be useful as a future consideration so not really too much there really quick shifter maybe change the screen and mirrors personal preference and uh, that's pretty much it on the plus side engine is great it's very fruity uh, I've got it in a uh, sport mode at my and, uh, itchy nose that's better yeah I've got it in sport mode at the moment you know in this mid-range it's happy to sit here you know four four six thousand revs all day long you're not working the engine hard you're not stressing it doesn't redline till nine thousand so um, pretty good this is a very very bumpy road probably not coming across on the screen but uh, it's actually really nice to ride it feels very flickable this uh, it's got a bit of a feel of like maybe Maybe like the Africa 20 1100, like that in-between size, it's not quite a middleweight, not quite a big heavy uh, GSA for instance, so feels pretty pretty good on the whole, steers pretty sweetly which I like, so it's really key with a big heavy touring bike that it steers well, stops well, and this certainly ticks that box and it's also comfortable and practical as well, uh, there's uh, a million uh, accessories including soft luggage and hard luggage uh, uh, multiple hard luggage adventure style uh, tough boxes to sports style uh, touring boxes your pillion is going to like riding on this bike um, there's no option for a heated seat i believe which is uh, probably something they need to do in the future some of the bikes now i think the tiger 1200 and the multistrada have heated seats for rider and pillion and I'm sure Mrs. Harley would appreciate that uh, if uh, the husband has bought one. Uh, the hydraulic lifters are a big key selling point. Uh, no valve adjustments in effect, which means uh, you know reduced maintenance costs. But also, if you like to span the bikes yourself when it's out of service, uh, when it's out of warranty, rather, uh, you know you can do your oil changes, check your bearings you know, uh, take your tyres off and have those uh, uh, swapped out, that kind of thing. Uh, if you're, you're relatively comfortable doing uh, minor service work at home, it's a great bike to own out of the warranty period and work on yourself. Everything is very accessible and uh, everything is, uh, um, you know, available from your Harley dealership in terms of filters and oil and uh, in terms of the valve checks as I say there are none because it's uh, effectively self adjusting uh, the menu options are pretty straightforward and they work pretty well it's pretty intuitive uh, the rest of it this uh, is your uh, you turn it to uh, turn the ignition on this little button on top you press to start you can turn off your traction control at the bottom there for off-road use pretty nice overall I like the uh, the blacked out bars and risers and ancillaries that's uh, they look really nice and uh, also there's a couple of nice touches like there's a cut relief cut in the clutch there so if it, you drop it off-road the end will snap off and you'll still have a clutch lever for instance so they uh, do intend this bike to be ridden off-road uh, the adjusters are uh, adjustable with these little span adjusters, circular span adjusters, not sure if the camera will pick that up. And it's a proper uh, Brembo master cylinder by the look of it as well as the brake system so uh, end to end they've done that right and got uh, the best there is. Yeah sport mode is definitely a little bit uh, peppier and I would uh, probably leave it in that all the time. My understanding is from other videos that the uh, fuel economy is not the best on this. Uh, you may see, if you use spiritedly, you may see kind of high 30s, which is not too dissimilar to the Multistrada, which uh, gets panned really for its uh, thirstiness. Although I think the fuel tank on this is uh, a little bit larger than the Ducatis, 
and that will certainly help so usually it's range that annoys people more than fuel economy and I'm sure overall this would be just fine uh, I would say off the top of my head not knowing the size of the tank I would say you're probably going to be uh, able to do 200 miles and then look for, for fuel uh, with probably a you know 30 mile comfort range something like that and that's you know in line with the rest of its peers and uh, uh, an ample for this kind of machine now in terms of off-road not being able to take this bike off-road it's uh, it's a brand new machine it's already sold and uh, we have to look after it for the new owner uh, but I can say having ridden off-road extensively as a kid and taking my GSA on plenty of uh, gravel roads and fire trails uh, this would be better than the GSA I think personally uh, gut feeling off-road uh, a lot of the time the tyres make the biggest difference of course um, <clears throat> but I really feel that uh, this feels that little bit thinner between the legs and a little bit more agile and if you stand up on it I would say the uh, it's very comfortable to stand up on I have st stood up on it at kind of freeway speeds and it's fine as well you get plenty of airflow which is nice um, but yeah I, I think this would be pretty you know all things considered a, you know for a big heavy adventure bike uh, I think it would be pretty good if you take it onto uh, the dirt I'd still say non-technical stuff dry dirt uh, it's no KTM 250 right but uh, compared with its peers I think it would uh, it's very credible uh, so I think some of the Harley marketing videos aren't just uh, marketing I think it's uh, with the right tyres on uh, this would be pretty useful if you're a confident rider uh, off-road in terms of colours <coughs> I, uh, I wasn't sure about this one in the picture but I quite like it in the flesh the orange with the off-white uh, front almost looks like a pale grey really uh, I didn't think I think maybe it would have been better if it was completely orange but the two-tone works okay uh, most people I know seem to like the black in the flesh I was a bit it's okay quite nice uh, but you know Harley sold 9 out of 10 Harley sold a black it's just a fact so that will always be popular and never go wrong for res resale value etc in terms of uh, in terms of uh, the uh, other colours, <laughs> spit it out, Rich. Uh, there's like a desert green, which is kind of like a military green. I really don't like that colour, and I don't think it will be popular. And my gut feeling is they'll probably drop that at the end of the year. And then the other one I'd really like to see in the flesh because I like it in the pictures, and that's the kind of. Uh, uh, I'm not sure what they call it but it's like a battleship grey it's almost like a Audi Nardo grey uh, and of course with the big tank of shield on the tank it looks really cool a quick way to distinguish the standard Pan America from the Pan America special is that the standard Pan America will have the big HD logo on the tank <coughs> on the tank excuse me and this will have um, the, the special will ha has the bar and shield so that's really a, a key difference but the self-leveling suspension and the wire wheels are still optional extras a thousand dollars and five hundred dollars respectively and I would urge you to to buy both basically now let's see how well uh, how well this is balanced pretty well so if I can stand up no hands on a bike uh, but I don't know extensively I'd say it's good nothing wrong with its performance we've just seen the roll on power there fourth gear snick it up into top 3000 revs nice and smooth good job Harley I hope they sell a, a ton this bike's already sold the others they've got coming in are pre-sold I hear similar things all over the states 
I don't think it'll outsell the GS, but obviously that is uh, the biggest selling bike in the world and a known quantity has legions of fans but I hope this is a start of something big for Harley I hope it really opens their eyes in terms of how uh, how good this bike is and who their future customers might be and why they should be producing more bikes like this good job Harley nice bike The Pan America Special is $19,999. It comes in vivid black, gauntlet grey metallic, deadwood green, and Baja orange and stonewashed white pearl. And it features double overhead cams and independent variable valve timing. The suspension system is semi-active both front and rear with automatic preload or vehicle load control as Harley call it has a 6 axis IMU, customizable riding modes. The five standard riding modes are Comfort for rough roads, Balance for general riding, Sport for general control and higher damping rates, Off-road soft, ideal for logging roads, washboards and rocky terrain, Off-road firm for aggressive riding on soft terrain. Other standard features include tyre pressure monitoring, centre stand, aluminum skid plate, adaptive headlight, hand guards, heated grips, steering damper, Bluetooth connectivity, map navigation, 6.8 inch touchscreen, cornering lights based on lean angles of 8, 15 and 23 degrees. Worthwhile options include adaptive ride height for $1000 and cheapest lace wheels for $500. The Pan America is a sportier bike than it might look, and so a quick shift to a standard would be nice. I would fit a different screen, but windshield effectiveness is down to personal physique and preference. Many will ride this bike through winter, so a heated seat option would be useful. Hydraulic lifters that provide continual automatic valve adjustments requiring no servicing has huge appeal, as does ride control to automatically lower the height of the seat whenever the bike comes to a stop or is simply turned on. It is available on the special for $1,000, but will drop the seat height to around 800 mm, broadening its appeal. The engine is well counterbalanced, providing a very smooth delivery. It's more mainstream than a classic Harley Twin. It's not lacking in power with a claimed 150 horsepower. You can sneak cruise control on at 100 miles per hour and it'll just sit there all day. I've not seen a Pan Am at night, but the lighting all around looks very good. Harley Davidson have the largest dealer network in North America, and dealer availability is important to many buyers. Like the initial shock of seeing the Tesla Cybertruck for the first time, different often grows on people over time. The oblong headlight assembly and lack of the rigor beak initially raised eyebrows, but has been more widely accepted now. Of course there's a few cursory parallels to the Road Glide and Fat Bob models, but the Pan Am is very much its own entity. So where does it fit in in the grand scheme of things when it comes to the large capacity heavyweight adventure tourers? Well let's look at its peers. The Suzuki V-Strom 1000 will appeal to Japanese bike fans who want a big V-twin and the lowest outlay possible. The Kawasaki Versus 1000 will appeal to existing Kawasaki customers who like inline falls and value for money. The Yamaha Super Tenere will appeal to those craving an unstressed parallel twin with proven reliable shaft drive design. The Honda Africa Twin 1100 will appeal to those who value reliability, a strong spec and a dual clutch option. The KTM 1290 Adventure will appeal to those who genuinely want to cover decent distances on forest roads and trails. The Ducati Multistrada V4S appeals to those who want the most tech, an amazing V4, all roundness and long service intervals. The BMW R1250 GS is the grandfather of the class and appeals to those riders who want a known quantity and a shaft drive. The Pan Am is classier and playing in a different league to the Suzuki, Kawasaki and Yamaha Japanese machines and it is significantly more powerful than the Honda and has even more dealers. Its genuine peers are more the KTM, Ducati and BMW European bikes. 
Build quality looked better than the KTM and traditionally Harley had performed better reliability wise. The Ducati is a very difficult bike to better but the Harley has those USPs of ride control and automatic valve adjustments. Everyone wants to beat the BMW in sales and that's hard straight out of the gate. But Harley have the dealer network and loyal customers and surprisingly to many they've actually priced the bike right to look just appealing enough. So in summary, it's hard to argue that the Harley Davidson Pan American Special isn't a fantastic first effort. It should inspire them to throw money at continually developing and improving it each year. The Multistrada is probably bike of the year, but it's taken 20 years of development. The GS is so rounded, it's practically a circle, but it's taken 40 years to get where it is. I mentioned the Cybertruck earlier, and like that, in some ways, the Pan Am is anti-conventional. It's for those who think harping on about the Multistrada's yawn-inducing cleverness and Ferrari-like red paint is overrated, and that seeing yet another GS parked outside Starbucks is just so boring. The dealer network, the smart lowering suspension, and the home mechanic-friendly valve adjusters are all undeniable. What is also undeniable is that the Pan Am is just a great ride in itself and a very good ownership proposition. It's a function over form machine, but subjective aesthetics aside, it's arguably the best machine they've ever made. Hey you, if you want to become one of the Ride On people, don't forget to subscribe. Ride often, ride carefully, ride on.